In the last section, we are going to talk about the endocrine system. This is section 35.3, the endocrine system. In this section, we are first going to talk about control of the body, how that happens. Uh, then we're going to talk about the endocrine glands, because those play an, a significant role in controlling the body. And then we're going to talk about negative feedback control, and we're going to give some specific examples of this negative feedback control. So let's start with control of the body. Uh, internal control of the body is directed by two systems. There's a bunch of stuff that's happening inside of your body right now, and it needs to be controlled, and there are two main systems that control that. Number one, the nervous system. The nervous system. And number two, the endocrine system. Very important systems. Not that any, important, any systems in the body aren't important, but these are definitely up there in levels of importance. Uh, we're not going to talk about the nervous system in this section. We're going to have a, an entire chapter that deals with that, chapter 36. But in this last section, we're going to talk specifically about the endocrine system. The endocrine system is made up of a bunch of endo endocrine glands. And these glands are important because they release chemicals directly into the bloodstream. And these chemicals act as messengers throughout the body. What are these chemicals called? These chemicals are called hormones. And the endocrine system is what releases those hormones so that they can act as messengers throughout the body. All right, so the endocrine glands release these chemicals throughout the body. They act as messengers, and they control a lot of what is happening in the body. The hypothalamus, this is located in the brain, and you can see it right here in this figure, is this little red por portion that you see. Um, it's a portion of the brain, and what it does is it controls the pituitary gland. So everybody say pituitary gland. Everybody say it again. Pituitary gland. It's an interesting name. Um, and the pituitary gland would be this little structure that you see right here. So you have the hypothalamus and you have the pituitary gland. And the hypothalamus controls the activity of the pituitary gland. Um, and it's connected by nerves and blood vessels. Uh, that, and it sends the messages to the pituitary gland, and as a result of that, the pituitary gland releases its chemicals. So, we're starting in the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland. What it does is it sends its messages to the pituitary gland and controls what it does. And the pituitary gland then sends out its chemicals. And we're going to look at some of the effects of their chem its chemicals. Um, when it releases the, its chemicals, then that stimulates other endocrine glands to secrete there. So we have a bunch of glands in the body, a number of glands in the body. And the hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland sends out its chemicals, and then it controls the other endocrine glands. Now we mentioned hormones. And hormones are the chemicals that are secreted by those endocrine glands. And those hormones have a number of different effects because they convey information to the cells in the body and tell, it to do, tell them to do a number of different things. We're going to look at specific examples in a while. But how they work is they bind to receptors on plasma membranes or in the nuclei of the target cells. What is nuclei? What does that word mean? Multiple what? Okay, uh, it's the plural of nucleus. Okay, so if you have more than one nucleus, you call it, you call them nuclei. So, the hormones can either bind to receptors on the plasma membrane, or it can bind to receptors in the nuclei of the target cells. Now, these endocrine glands are located throughout the body. And they, most of them are controlled by the pituitary gland. Now we're getting in, I know we're getting into some technical details, um, 
but we need to make sure to understand this. Now, in your book, on page, let's see what page it is in your book. If you have your books, please take them out. And in your book, on page 960, you will see figure 35.11. Anyhow, so in that you'll see you have the pituitary gland, you have the hyp hypothalamus, and then you have some other glands. What are the other glands that you see there? The thyroid gland. What else? The ovaries in, in females, right? Not in males, hopefully. Uh, what's the next? The what? Testes. I heard another one over here. Adrenal gland. Adrenal gland. What does that sound like? Adrenaline, right? And we're going to talk about um, what that does and so on. So you have a number of endocrine glands, and those, most of those endocrine glands are controlled by which one? In the brain, the, the pituitary gland. Okay, so we have these endocrine glands throughout the body, the adrenal gland, the ovaries, the testes, the, um, the va various um, glands, the thyroids and the parathyroid glands, and they are controlled by the pituitary gland. And for that reason, we call the pituitary gland the master endocrine gland because it controls all of the other, most of the other glands. Let's give an example of how this works so that it can start making sense if it doesn't already make sense. Uh, human growth hormone, that is a hormone um, that is released when low blood sugar is detected. So blood, blood sugar levels drop. Um, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary gland, okay, I need you to do something about this. What I need you to do is release HGH, human growth hormone. And when the pituitary gland releases the HGH, that causes the liver to convert the glycogen. Remember we said that um, sometimes we store the glycogen in the liver when we break down the carbohydrates and even fats. Um, the liver converts that glycogen into glucose and then releases glucose into the blood. What does that do to the blood sugar level? It raises it. it raises it. Okay? So what happened there is your blood sugar levels went down a little bit and your brain said, oh, wait, wait, we got to do something about this. Hy uh, hypothalamus tells the pituitary, release which hormone? HGH. You can call it that. Okay? HGH, it releases that. And then that says to the, ki the liver to convert glycogen into glucose and then release that back into the bloodstream. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, all right, sweet. Um, and that causes the sugar levels to increase. And then what the hypothalamus is going to do is say, okay, the sugar levels are increasing. I can stop, um, I can stop telling the, I can slow down the release of HGH from the pituitary gland. All right, so it goes down. We need something that tells it, go back up. Then it goes up, and then it says, okay, it's getting up there. We can stop now. And that cycle continues and continues. And this is what we call negative feedback control. What is, ne what is negative feedback control? Well, let's take an example of a thermostat. What does the thermostat do? Controls the temperature. How does it do that? Okay, so it has a thermometer, and okay, so if it if, if the thermo thermometer if the sensor detects that the temperature is going down a little too much, it's gonna do what? Send a signal to the heater. Send a signal to the heater. It says, hey, it's getting a little too cold in here. We need to do something about it. Then, if you have an old house like I do, and you, your heater turns on, you hear. <laughs> and it just keeps going and then the heat starts coming out after a few seconds and all that good stuff. The heat is going to go up. It's going to blow out heat. The temperature is going to rise. What happens when it reaches a certain level? It shuts off. The thermostat says, okay, it's getting to that temperature. You don't need to work anymore. Stop heater. And it shuts that off and the temperature goes back down. And that cycle continues. And this is what we call negative feedback control. Okay, so when the temperature drops, that causes the, the, the thermostat stimulates the heater to increase its output. And then the temperature rises, the thermostat stops stimulating the, the heater, 
So the heater automatically shuts off. It's not getting any more any stimulation from the thermostat, so it shuts off. Uh, and this cycle continues on. So this is a perfect example of how these endocrine glands and the hormones w function in our body. If things get too low, something happens that says, increase it. And when it increases, if it gets too high, it says, shut it off. And that cycle goes on and on. So most endocrine glands operate under this negative feedback system. Okay, so most of the endocrine glands operate in this way. For example, we looked at HGH. What did, what did HGH uh, get released in response to? Okay, so the sugar levels, the blood sugar levels went down, and the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus told the pituitary, release that HGH. It started releasing the HGH, and that causes uh, the liver to release uh, glucose into the bloodstream, and that raises it raises the blood sugar level, and that cycle continues on. Let's look at another example. We don't only need to regulate the amount of sugar in the blood, but we also want to regulate the amount of water in the blood. So how does the control of blood water levels happen? You're working out in the gym, okay? You're lifting weights, you're bench pressing. How much are you bench pressing? Two pounds. Two pounds. Whoa, you're very weak today. And uh, for some reason, two pounds is what you chose to, to bench press. But let's say you are bench pressing that two, and let's add 100 <laughs> to the end of that so, so we don't seem too wimpy. Um, so you're bench pressing <laughs> 200 pounds, and are you using water? Yes. Okay, and you notice that because um, after you're working out for a while, what do you get? Sweat. You're sweating and all that stuff, and you start getting thirsty. Fortunately, over here, we have this um, nice handy water cooler right outside the gym. So anytime you feel that you're, you, you, you're, getting too th you're getting thirsty, you can run around the corner really quick and get some water. So the water level in your blood is going down. You're sweating. Okay? You're releasing water. So the water levels in your blood are going down. What happens there, once again, we have the same type of system where the hypothalamus says, the says to the pituitary gland, I need you to do something. In this case, what I want you to do is re release antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. On the test, when I ask these questions, if you say antidiuretic hormone, you get extra credit in my heart. If you say ADH, you just get the regular points that you get, which is okay also, but no extra credit in my heart. I'm sorry. But either way, you can say it, and I will accept that. So it releases ADH. The pituitary gland releases ADH. And what that ADH do, does is it reduces the amount of water in urine by causing the absorption of water in the kidneys. Okay, so the kidneys is where a lot of the absorption happens. We haven't spoken much about the kidneys, but the kidneys filter the blood, and as a result of what it does, it releases urine. Okay? But what happens now when this ADH is being produced, uh, the, 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 the kidneys are absorbing more water so that more water is going into the bloodstream and less water is coming out in your urine. Now, have you ever noticed, um, I don't mean to sound gross or anything, but if you work out for a while and you go to the restroom, if you're not drinking a lot of water, what's the difference in your urine? More color, right? I see some of you guys are looking at me with grossed out faces, but it happens. You've noticed it. All right, there's more color because there's less what? Water. Okay, and why is that happening? Well, hypothalamus said to pituitary gland, hey, release some ADH. The blood water levels are dropping. It releases the ADH, and then the kidneys say, okay, I need to hold on to some of this water and not release as much. Make sense? All right, sweet. So in the, if the body gets overhydrated, okay, so we're, we're getting too much water or more water than we need in the bloodstream, we're going to have the same thing happening. Hypothalamus is going to stop stimulating the pituitary gland to release ADH. Let's look at another way of controlling blood sugar level, blood glucose levels. Uh, when you eat, you're eating food, blood sugar levels are going to rise. 
okay? Because you're taking in stuff and uh, most likely some of that has uh, carbohydrates in it and your blood sugar levels, blood glucose levels are going to rise. When blood glucose level rise, the pancreas, remember the pancreas when we looked at the digestive system? Um, the pancreas is going to release something called insulin. Insulin is produced in your body, yes, and the pancreas is where it is produced. What, is in, what do you think insulin is going to do? Okay, look at what, why it's being released. B blood sugar levels are going up. What do you think the insulin is going to do? It's going to lower the glucose level, right? That's the overall effect. Um, this is going to cause the liver and the muscle cells to take in glucose, take it in from the blood. And that's going to cause the blood glucose levels to go down. Um, so this lowers the blood glucose levels. And then when the levels go back up, the pancreas releases a different hormone. And the name of that hormone is what? What is it called? Glucagon. Okay. And what the glucagon does is it causes the release of glucose from the liver. Okay, so this is a different way of controlling um, blood sugar level. So uh, pancreas releases insulin. Insulin causes the liver to, and the muscle cells to take in glucose, and this lowers the, the glucose levels and all that good stuff. Gluca glucagon does the exact opposite. Now, what is diabetes? Okay, and what, what does that do in terms of your um, blood sugar level? Causes your blood sugar levels to, to be too high. Okay? And if your blood sugar levels are too high, the pancreas is not doing what it's doing, what do you end up having to take? Insulin, right? So you're taking insulin shots or whatever the case might be, and what that does is exactly what the pancreas is supposed to do. Causes the glucose levels to go down so that the sugar levels in your blood don't get too high. Okay, we have different types of, of hor hormones. Um, the first one we're going to talk about would be steroid hormones. And steroid hormones, these are produced in the body, and these are made from lipids. Okay, so they are lipid soluble. Polar or nonpolar? What is that? Nonpolar, that is correct. And what these do is these bind to receptors on the inside of cells. Okay, so these steroid hormones made from lipids, they are nonpolar, and they bind to receptors inside the cell. And then we have amino acid hormones, and these, of course, are made of amino acids. And those bind to receptors on the cell membrane. Okay, so the two types of hormones, um, steroid hormones and amino acid hormones. One, binds, one type binds on the inside and one type binds to receptors on the cell membrane. Now, anybody here ever get stressed out? Okay, we have three people in this class that get stressed out. Wow, that's amazing. You guys are awesome. All right, what happens when you get stressed out? That's what we're going to talk about right now because this does have something to do with what's going on in the endocrine system. Um, adrenal gland is involved in preparing your body for stressful situations. Adrenal gland, you guys said that sounded like what? Adrenaline. adrenaline. What does adrenaline do? It makes your heart rate go up. In some cases, it gives you energy. All right, and you call, what do you, what do you call it when you you get really hyper and energetic and all that good stuff as a response to this. And what? Adrenaline rush, right? Okay, so adrenaline rush obviously has something to do with making things go faster, increasing something. Um, the, the adrenal gland, adrenal glands are located on the top of the kidneys. Okay, so it's located on the top of the kidneys and it has two parts, the inner portion and the outer portion. Very creative in our naming, inner and outer. Which one do you think is on the inside? Inner. The outer. The outer. <laughs> then we got some serious problems. 
All right, so let's look at the adrenal gland then. Let's look at how this is involved in what we're talking about. The outer, the outer portion releases steroid hormones like glucocorticoids and aldosterone. You guys have a lot of interesting words to learn for this test, right? So hormones like glucocorticoids and aldosterone. Aldosterone. And what that does, and you can see the adrenal gland right there on top of the two kidneys, this increases available glucose and it raises the blood pressure. Can you say that word? Which one? <laughs> Glucocorticoids. Everyone say that together. Glucocorticoids. <laughs> Let's say it four times, then you guys are going to remember it, at least until the end of the class period. Number one. <laughs> two. <laughs> three. Four. It almost sounds like a tongue twister, right? <laughs> All right, so glucocorticoids and aldosterone, and that increases available glucose and it raises the blood pressure. The inner portion secretes the amino acid hormone epinephrine, and that's, another, that's a, the, the scientific name for adrenaline. So if you want to sound intelligent when you tell your friends you're getting an adrenaline rush, you're going to say, man, I'm getting an epinephrine rush. Everybody's going to look at you like, what, what are you talking about? But you, you'll sound smart, so that's a good thing. All right, so it releases epinephrine and norepinephrine, and that increases the heart rate, blood pressure, and the rate of respiration. So you see here the effects that we have, increasing glucose, raising blood pressure, increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure, and increasing the rate of respiration. Okay, so that's all things that are increasing. So remember that. That's, that's what happens with the adrenal gland. Now, what happens if you are constantly stressed out? What, what tends to develop in people that are constantly stressed out? Anger and attitude. Now, in terms of your body, in terms of physiology, what about high blood pressure? You ever hear about that resulting as an as a, um, effect of being stressed out too much? Okay, That's because the adrenal gland is secreting these hormones, the glucocorticoids, the aldosterone, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, epinephrine being adrenaline, and that's speeding things up, increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure, and if that happens too much, that can cause significant problems. Okay, let's look at another set of horm um, endocrine glands, the thyroid glands. Um, the thyroid gland regulates development, metabolism, growth, and development. And the thyroid glands are located around here. This picture that you're seeing here, this section here would be the neck. And you can see here we have the thyroid gland. Um, and that secretes the hormone calcitonin. So I want you to know these different um, endocrine glands and what hormone they release. This secretes calcitonin, and that causes the release of calcium. And calcium is involved in a number of different things, from uh, muscle contraction to um, strengthening bones and all that good stuff. But um, the thyroid gland secreting calcitonin has a way of regulating the release of calcium. We're not going to go into too many details there. But then we also have the parathyroid gland. And the parathyroid gland, you can see them here. This is the thyroid glands. And then we have these four glands inside of the parathyroid glands. And that secretes the parathyroid hormone. So that one will be easier to remember. Um, which causes the kidney to absorb calcium and magnesium. So this one causes the release of calcium. This one causes calcium to be absorbed. So they kind of have opposing effects. So in review, we have looked at the control of the body. We said that it's, it's done by the nervous system and the endocrine system. Um, today we spoke about the endocrine system. Um, so we spoke about the endocrine glands, negative feedback control like the thermostat, and we gave some specific examples of negative feedback control and how the endocrine system works.
That is it for section 35.3.